Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, featuring a two versus two, a Monday novice fight on the rain. And my apologies for the hiccups. Not sure why they decided to appear right at this very moment, but they did. And we shall be watching on this morning. Now, we shall be watching Breton Internet Sucks fighting for the Americans. The Shippy fighting for the Commonwealth. Together, they make for a combined Allied American force somewhere fighting on near the German border. Opposing them shall be Sotami Slocum and fighting for the Panzer Elite. And Winfried also fighting for the Panzer Elite, fighting for the 106th Panzer Brigade, Feldherrn Halle. Formed partly out of all SA veterans, Sturmabteilung, an entire division was in fact also formed out of it. I believe it was a Panzer Grenadier Division, later on a Panzer Division, fought up near Finland first, well, the Baltics actually, I suppose, and then afterwards they fought near Hungary. We are seeing a recce section already funny here, the Commonwealth going aggressively for the fuel pot, being engaged by Sotamis Lokums. Panzer Grenadier, although already one, gets sniped again. That's that little thing, you know, when do you snipe? Usually, again, I would always say, wait till they're down to one man, trying to get away, then snipe and get a clean wipe on that squad. But nope, not for the CP. Instead, focus on immediately lowering the damage capability of the Panzer Grenadier squad, which, of course, is also another way of doing it. Kettenkraut's left and right, heading center. Currently, the Panzer Elite, the Panzer Brigade, are securing most of the map. Vinfurt's Panzer Grenadiers are moving north. And we are seeing that Sotamis Lokum is pretty quickly going for the Kampfkorp Company. Panzer Grenadiers are down to one man. And now, of course, had he had then the marksman shot, he could have sniped that Barker. And, of course, in short, that he would have been one Panzer Grenadier squad shorter. But he did not decide to do that, Mr. Deshipi. And so the Panzer Grenadier was allowed to get back home and get reinforced. Ken Crowd coming out of the Rekki section. Finally, engagement up in the north. Panzer is getting spotted by the Ravnar up in the here. And the Ravnar quick to run into the house to provide better cover against the Panzer Grenadiers in the middle of the road. Although more Panzer Grenadiers are arriving for Winfried. Some upgrade with the Gewehr 43, the rest not. Again, taking up position in this house with now a Gewehr 43 as well there. But again, could run into some problems this time if he tries to escape. He could get... No, he does it again. The CP is loose on the trigger finger. Not a patient hunter. And so misses a great opportunity again to get a complete clean kill on an entire squad. Which is definitely a bit of a shame. But there you go. Raven holding up here. Going in against the Panzer is holding up there as well for... Slowing down the riflemen, more forces moming in from Breton. Going in after the Panzer kind of this, or the Panzer might of course want to first down these troops first, which are out in the open. There we go, Riflemen pinned down, and there we go, focusing down the next Riflemen squad. Going straight at it from out in the open, not necessarily the best move, there we go. Although they do manage to get a few kills on the Panzer Grenadiers. Other squad up here might want to continue, you know, not taking that big two points instead of focusing on the enemy. And Incendia Grenade goes off, Panzer squad down to two men, down to one man retreat, but the Riflemen squad also pushes away. Riflemen who were previously pinned down, get a kill on that Panzer Grenadier squad. So there's two left, not looking good. Half of the squad already out of cover, down to two men. Incendiary grenade, lot with the rifle, and they've got retreat using the incendiary grenade apparently as a sort of small distraction. At the same time, fighting continues down south. Infantry half track man with Panzer Grenadiers is on the hunt for British blood. Another Panzer Grenade squad moves up to support the infantry half track. Keep the weight clear of Brits. Need to be careful though, the infantry half track is not necessarily the most heavily armored vehicle or the most sturdy. Thing. And there we go, already taking quite a bit of damage, the lieutenant adding things in with his Sten gun. More troops though on the way from Sotamis. And meanwhile, the GP continues to fight, the infantry half track will likely go down. Which will be a small victory, and there we go. Infantry half track out of control, need to get into cover again, cover is vital, cover is important, cover wins wars. Infantry moving straight towards the Panzer taking considerable losses, in particular one low on health. Not necessarily the best move by the Shiva, though in this case it does pay off a bit. Panzer need to retreat, though down to one man there. So we are seeing two Panzer squads versus an infantry section and a lieutenant, but the lieutenant is already veterans he won. My apologies for the technical difficulties, just seem to be one of those days already. 
infantry section though in a bit of trouble here. The lieutenant doing what I can and apparently he was the one to get the kill on the infantry half track. Bloody They're hell. After one of our munitions. Now we go, looks like the Panzer Grenadiers are once more forced away. The Americans continue their fighting in the north. Panzer Grenadiers from Rinfrit not necessarily doing too well, neither. And so time is looking, pushing in further Panzer Grenadiers, but now in a more piecemeal manner, which is definitely going to pay out in the man fat, well, to the advantage of the British. Although now we are seeing a Vickers machine gun and going down to cover this area. Panzer Grenadiers could try and flank up and do some damage now. And the meanwhile, Panzer is up north, pushed away. By British internets. Riflemen. We're not seeing much else from him, else from him on the supply going up, so we could be seeing something else soon to follow up. Incendio grenade lobbed right there on the rifleman, doing a bit of burning, a bit of singeing, a bit of crisping. Let's go a look at the CP. Who looks to already have a field support truck follow up here. Make his machine gun replacement did go down. The Panzers were able to kill two Brits, but that was about it. The Vickers are still down. The Vickers is still ready to fill the crouch with some lead. The American continued their successful northern advance. The resistance offered by Winfred having clearly not been sufficient at all. Panzer Support Command actually going up from both of them. That's peculiar. In some ways, the only difference is that one went for the Luke Steak Company, the other for the Kampfgruppe Company. One might have imagined one would go for the Panzer Jäger Company instead, you know, get some armoured cars, Sturmgewehrs and whatnot. Doctrine's already being decided here early on. Good planning, I suppose. Tria Center. But it's advancing about here. Three sections out for the Sheepy. And we are seeing a captain on the way pretty quickly, no sappers. And we are seeing Sotami swimming into the center. Following up in the wake of the Kettenkrat that the North currently lost to the Americans. Not mining though, that's a bit of a shame. And Winifred needs defensive operations. His troops are in a terrible condition. They could easily prove to be easy veterancy for the opponent. So definitely something I think. Vinford there needs to work on it. The meanwhile, troops are advancing up down the southern road. Troops pushing into the center. Water Panzer Guns need to get into cover. Although, note offensive veterans. Panzer Guns definitely going to help. One squad getting suppressed. And there we go. This looks to be a very bad engagement for the Rifle. They are taking heavy, heavy losses from Sotami's Panzer Grenadiers. Numerous men already lying around the small car right there. Down to a five man squad. And that is quickly going down hill from there as well. And there you go, the Rafa pushed away, although they do, do manage to run at the same time. Panzer is pushing up here, also taking quite a bit of damage already. Another score pushed back, and again, defensive operations really would pay off. These troops, for example, I mean, this three man score is going to be easy kills, easy veterancy for his opponent. He really needs to get them back, and again, defensive operations get them patched up. Anything else would be reckless at best. Ready to move. Panzer support commands working, and we are seeing a Panzer fall out from Winfried, rushing for the Panzer Kampfwagenfeuer. Don't believe the Panzer Brigades did have that old Panzer force, but I suppose they could have been pulled in from another nearby unit. Possibly some Panzer training unit at nearby, as they did see some combat here and there in Normandy, Market Garden, and so on. And they were usually equipped with the older mark of Panzers, and usually also some. French armor in some cases. Brits pushing pretty hard from the south. So Tommy's has so far ignored it, although with a Panzer IV, which the upgraded could actually take on this force quite nicely. Slow advance towards here. The Germans seem focused on the north so far. The Panzer Brigade Feldherrnhalle. Let by Dr. Ernst Becker. Becker? I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that one actually. But nonetheless, a rather solid German commander, at least against the Russians, who had less success against the Americans, by the way. But walls back on the eastern front before it was transferred to that Panzer Brigade led the Schwerer Panzer Regiment B here, which was actually a combination of a heavy tank battalion and a Panther battalion. A pretty rare unit, but which saw fought with distinction and did a lot of damage to the Russians. 
and pretty much also had, I think, at one stage, most of, if not half of all the heavy armor on the eastern front at one stage. Lads are ready, sir. What do you want me to do? And Winfried seems a bit excitable. Mildly put. Grenadiers here. In particular, when he ought to be paying a bit better attention to his own troops and their condition. Panzer Force running about. In fact, both players now with Panzer Force. Panzer Kampfwagen Fear. So that's definitely interesting. Not very often you see two Panzer Elite players for going the Panzer Elite Command, and they're both going for Panzer Force. Oh well. Not that I would never say to say that is a bad idea, but it's definitely peculiar. Kampfgruppe Company going out for Winfried. Points being secured there in the north. A bit slow, but overall, there you go. Looks like the allies are preparing for something. Two stewards up for Dust GP. That's interesting. Two light tanks. Again, usually only see one. So there's definitely some small oddities going on here. Something a bit out of the usual pattern of play. And a logistic upgrade up for some scout cars built by Winfred. Panzer forming up and we're seeing Luftwaffe Doctrine for Sotamis with 40 Megas equipped with the FG42 opening up on the Rifleman. Able to do a lot of nasty damage. And the Rifleman certainly take a beating from the 40 Megas right there. Looks like two squads heading straight at the Panzer Fall directly from the front. My god, that is absolutely reckless to put it mildly. Definitely not recommendable that you lead a head on assault on the Panzer IV Infantry Support Tank. In particular, let not die, and he's doing it. He's charging directly at it, in particular when there's a house next to it with Thalchim Jaegers, with FG 42s. The Ravenna just getting murdered. Squad down, two squads wiped out on the spot. That was absolutely insane going on there from Breton. That was. Re well, not. Well, I'm not going to say that word, but definitely not very clever. I mean, you do not lead a bleeding charge on a Panzer IV from the front when it's locked down, but you're not when there's next to it in a house, a full 40 mega score with FG 42s. That's begging for a beating. And another 40 mega score appears from the postal office, having hidden in the mail days before they spring out of the mail mailbox at the right time, apparently. And that other, of course, just snug in. By the way. Looks like some British squads are getting murdered here by the 40 Megas again. Do not underestimate the anti-infantry power of the mighty 40 Megas. Quite some elite infantry. The stuff of legend, lads. In particular when they end up managing to gun down that many Brits and a brand gun has been left behind for someone to pick up. And looks like the riflemen are attempting to repeat the trick. Again, not the brightest of ideas going on here from Breton. Again, you should, as a rule of thumb, not be attacking a Panzer like the Panzer Foyn from Sport Tank head on like that. Another pair of sticky bombs. Another infantry squad pushes forward. And continues to take heavy losses. An enemy unit has fallen Stuart Light Tank moving up. And in fact, there's not a lot to stop it. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, both players have focused on the Panzer IV, but they don't have any anti-tank. I mean, the closest they have is the Panzer IV. That's not that solid. And of course, the Panzer Faust on the Fulgium Jäger. So it's a bit... It's a bit peculiar. And definitely a huge mistake from the two Panzer Elite players. You should never that much for go anti-tank assets. But there we go, actually. Quick to upgrade with the Panzer Strikes. So there's something there. Increased squad size as well. That's definitely going to help Linford's troops. And zooming up there, getting Panzer Faust a bit by the Mexican Fulgium Jäger. And looks like a Panzer Jäger company command is finally up for Sotamis. Still, they're getting pushed back. 17 pounder gun here, though there's nothing in front of it, meaning once the enemy attacks, the 17 pounder gun will be in the line of fire and must be a very easy and tempting target. Tank destroyer going in after the Panzer IV, and definitely looks like the Panzer IV is losing this fight since it can't very well penetrate the frontal armor of the tank destroyer. And the Panzer Grenadiers next to it simply can't repair fast enough. And there we go, it's down, flame for years, pop into the building, building above, pouring down fire upon the unfortunate Panzer Grenadiers. 
And we are seeing assault rifles now being equipped for the Tommy's Panzer Grenadiers. And the Ketten Crowd went down as well, Vin, for taking some nasty losses right there. Though he still has the Panzer for, although he does not see much use. And the Panzer here come on now going up from Infoot. Recu section fighting in support of the Stuart Light Tank. The other one's still down there, not repaired. Not a lot of infantry left currently for both players because, again, they did take a heavy beating from Sotamis and his 40 Megas and Panzer IV. Now we do see a Marder rolling up. I mean, in this case, the Stuart could, in theory, actually try and flank about it, and the Stuart. Actually does an inordinately large amount of damage to the Marder 3. But in this case, the Stuart Light Tank feels less confident and pulls back away from the might of the Marder 3. And another renewed American offensive up north. No browning automatics, by the way, for the American infantry. Oh, it looks like that one. Panzer squad with assault rifles simply cannot hold the line. And there we go. They go down like a house of cards with assault rifles. And it looks like the Panzer 4 is looking to hunt down the Stuart Light Tank. And we see the 17 pounder gun turning about just in preparation. And the Panzer 4 has other ideas. And look for the ground forces has been called in to support the Panzer so Brigade. Right here getting assaulted by two Fort Mega squads, including one with a Bren gun they stole. From the vile British Atomies, and there we go. Squawk went down. The Fortune Megas continue their advance. Engineers charging down the hill, but they are taking heavy losses to the automatic fire from the Fortune Megas. Tank destroy could go down. If only they had the martyr to support them, they could quickly clear it out. Fortune Megas advance up the hill further and further, but again, they need something to help deal with, and that martyr should not have been locked. Down, definitely a bit of a silly thing there. Forty Megas now in the open versus Raven with Veteran G2. Need to be careful. Four six, four six men now. And where are the other Forty Megas at the very least? But no. Bit of a shame, bit of a shame. So Tommy's could have won that a bit better, but apparently decided against it. Sherman now rhyming opening up with the other 40 mega squads, sending that one running as well. And Vinford seems to completely shift away from here to towards here to try to deal with the British, but he's not having too much luck at the current moment by the looks of it. it looks like he has lost the Panzer IV, and looks like he's getting three scout cars. That's an awful lot of scout cars. Sherman rolling towards, looks like the Americans are going to retake the northern victory point and he's going to attempt it. We also see counter-attack going in from Satami's Panzer Galadiers and Luftwaffe troops. Supported by the Marder 3. Sherman is quick to retreat once it realizes that the Marder 3 is there. And a light anti-tank half-tech arriving for Satami's. Sherman takes a hit. Nasty stuff, nasty stuff. At least he was quick to retreat instead of trying to fight on in that case. That could easily have ended up very, very badly. Scout car not having quite as much luck down here. Only one scout car versus a lot of Brits. And the lieutenant. Another fighting going on up here. Sticky bomb on the artifice. Panzer is Luftwaffe troops doing what they can. Anti-tank half tech doing what they can. Forty Megas, I imagine, are on the move or still reinforcing. With a Panther battle group being prepared. Ah, Luftwaffe trooper dies heroically in the middle of the street. Or in the middle of the plaza. I'm not entirely sure what to describe it as. Another sticky bomb on the mana damaging the engine now. That's definitely not looking good. But overall, I mean, Drip Breton has rather crippled himself again through some of those really, really daft infantry attacks. And looks like a tank destroyer just went down, resulting in another loss for the Americans. Looks like we might be seeing a Panther Belt group soon enough. Stuart moves up and get oh gets off a cancer shot, forcing away the tank past the troops. The 
Buying enough time for the Commonwealth to bring in some more, and we looks like we do see, in fact, at this very stage, a armor command track up for the GP, and it's time to return to Britain. Who is in dire straight down to three infantry squads and a Sherman and some engineers. Alright, and advancing again, and looks like the Fortune Makers will. Make a repeat of the earlier trick, Colonel, with 25 kills popping into the house, flying down upon the riflemen. And looks like the riflemen are going to stream forward in even larger numbers past the house. And the Fortune Jaegers are simply murdering them in the streets. It's a massacre, like shooting fish in a barrel. American fish with M1 Garands, but fish nonetheless, because they are helpless. Helpless, like, well, fish versus a hunter with a gun or explosives. Absolutely a massacre. Notice how they're dying in the streets. Definitely Monday novice stuff right there again. You know, do not underestimate automatic weapons. Automatic weapons are definitely the one thing you do not want to get close to. And in this case, we saw it exemplified. Why? I mean, those Fortune me, I guess, just murdered them. And we are seeing a crumb lap for the Shiva. Looks like the Alice are pretty much bogged down, partly due to, again, Bretton really having no clue about automatic weapons, how the game in those senses seems to work and just throwing away a lot of troops needlessly and senselessly. Stood moving up here and we are seeing two Panthers arriving for Winfred, opening up on the Stood tank. Oh, Canada shot and murdered several tank busters, slaughtered them, diced them, and pretty much almost cooked them. Panthers will avenge the loss and get the Stuart. That seems about it. be it what they did then. Scout coming up, Panzer goes falling up in the wake, four man squads. Looks like Sotamis is taking up a defensive position up here with the light anti tank half tank and several Fortune Jaegers. And again, another push from Breton. Coming up on the Panzer and it is in their Fortune Jaeger brethren. Mana could try and pull up to support. Another rifleman dead. Sherman moving up slowly. And oh, gets off an RC8 on the Fortune Maker. Down to one man with so little health. You wouldn't believe it. And there we go. He's dead. And the Bren gun actually gets dropped again. Artillery being directed now. Looks like we are seeing Royal Canadian artillery from the GP. And he's using it to call in. Artillery strikes directly on the Germans. Forcing the way. Knocking out the anti tank half track in the process. Direct hit. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. And now there's a Bren gun ready to pick, picked up by the Americans, meaning that Bren gun has definitely seen some action with different armies by now. Rifle and fighting here, though they are quite exposed and are thus forced to retreat at the same time. Looks like the Germans are going to assault right here. Running straight into the Stuart and the Cromwell tank. Panthers are moving up, but they need to be careful. There is a 17 pounder gun nearby, and if it begins firing armor piercing rounds, it's going to get very unpleasant. Bull force up as well. We are seeing the Panther taking heavy and nasty damage <laughs> from the 17 pounder gun. Almost down to half health. All the way again, no, the 17 pounder gun is taking a lot of damage, which again is due to the fact it's a bit more forward and thus a bit more exposed. Sherman here doing a lot of damage to Satami's troops up north. Marder still not doing a lot. I mean, Satami really should have been moving that up further to support his troops instead of having it there. I mean, that was just daft. And looks like already one panther went down in an inglorious manner. In fact, a manner most inglorious. Sam is moving up. That panther is taking heavy damage, although the 17 pounder gun could go down any moment. And there we go. The steward gets the kill. The steward wrecks the panther. Fine. Goodness. Sector truly being laid down here. Check the point where the bridges are clearly not moving, anyways. Anti tank and up. Fortune Meg is getting murdered. Not looking good right there for Sotamis. Not looking good at all. American forces are making ready for another advance. Cromwell sneaking about. Corporats. No idea what that means. And yes, he is a bit busy holding back the Americans up in the north, ensuring they hold on to their victory point advantage. Enemy 
Mana though needs to get out of there. Anti tank is firing on there. We go slowly pulling away. Paris goes in full to me. No fire troops actually. I suppose if you're really an optimist, you could try and call them Fortune Jaeger, though it would not be very much right. There we go, Pans are going to escort back to Dustling behind only the Luftwaffe troops to hold back the American, and they're definitely not going to cut it, although Fortune Jaeger and more Panzer are going to arriving, including the most veteran of Fortune Jaeger, the ones with only 36 kills. Marta coming under fire from the anti tank gun once more. Fighting continues. Panzer Grenadiers continues to slay Rifen. So do the Fort Jäger. Down to three. Rifen currently for Breton. Panzer Grenadiers taking him losses. And Veterans is free, by the way. Quite impressive. Artillery going down on the German troops. They need to get the devil out of there. Come on. So, Tommies, save your troops. And looking over at the Sheepy, things are not looking that much more improved. I do believe it's time for the mid game analysis. Currently the situation is that the Germans are holding most of the map. They are doing some damage to the Allies, but at the same time they're also taking quite a bit of damage. They're going to have a much harder time holding up things, slightly due to some problem in coordinating troops, trouble, trouble having the support units actually support their combat troops, which is definitely a huge mistake, but also partly from Winfred simply being a daft bastard and pretty much charging straight at the opponent. Not much finesse, not much support, and losing to Panthers out right. So, I mean, there's definitely some problems. The Allies definitely are also making some problems again. It's basically a bit, you know, providing support and also in some cases, you know, just walking your men straight into a death trap. I mean, which is just pretty much downright dumb. Which really should not be happening, but yet, Bretton kept on doing it and he might even continue to do it. He needs to work on his unit preservation, he needs to work his tactics, he needs to work on his tactical awareness. Which is definitely also lacking, I'd be arguing. For the British, he needs to be, you know, a bit more aggressive, but at least he's also at the same time holding on to the only victory point while being attacked by Winfred. Although, again, Winfred is not necessarily the best attacker as we have seen. But, let's return to the fight, let's see how this progresses. The Germans definitely need to do some more damage. And they need to work on their unit preservation and their attacking skills. And there we go, the Marta finally bites the dust, the crew flying out the back. More to half track now for Winfrit. Not a lot left though for Winfrit, barely any infantry again due to some, I imagine, pretty poor unit preservation. Just two four man squads with Gabriel 43s. Of course, that can do some damage. Fighting continues. Mortar half tank looks to be trying to bombard the British positions. Two priests now out. Definitely a small choir right there coming in from the sheepy. And so far does not look like the American commander for by the way has chosen a doctrine and he said I might have missed it. Did I? Ah, he's got armor. And he's preparing for the Pershing. I suppose that's definitely one way of achieving or at least attempting to achieve victory. Forty Megs moving up, they're opening up on the rifle, right although this time Breton is quick to move his troops away from the Fort Mega with their FD-42s inside a house, which he's definitely not been in the past. Supply lines are have territory out of supply. Germans making up progress in the south. Priests though continue to bombard away. Some discussion apparently between the two players about where to go, what to do. And looks like Winfred is being a little less than courteous and a little less than willing to discuss the matter about other plans. So it sounds like he could be a pro troublesome teammate and we are seeing another Panther Battle Group arriving. Small assault going in here, already taking losses with this Panzer, but quickly retreating. Pietly left behind there, 17 pounder gun needs repairs, quickly, schnell, schnell. And another unit went down somewhere. 
likely to artillery something else and Winfried just seems utterly reluctant to give up even as they're losing already held territory no attempt to counterattack instead again Winfried seems utterly obsessed with this area he wants destruction and he's unable to listen to reason which is never a good sign in a teammate and we are seeing a third priest arriving by now a third my god that's definitely going to be a lot of artillery and there we go the assault is in Marta supporting infantry moving in the forge makers are supporting the panthers first panthers already in taking heavy fire looks like the 17 pounder gun is getting cleared out in incendiary rounds spread fire throughout the entire thing fortunately not cooking off the ammunition but leaving the gun otherwise usable panthers taking damage but considerably less damage now the 17 pounder gun is gone and there we go the cromwell went down both force is next both force 40 millimeter anti-tank gun gets recruited Fault Jaeger take a direct hit from the artillery losing six men in the blink of an eye Panthers continue to advance we are seeing the CP's forces being utterly decimated murdered slaughtered there's nothing he can do he did not have enough death in defense and he got overwhelmed by one punishing assault and we are seeing that Bretton is trying to reinforce and help but again he does not quite have the force because again Bretton has been poorly preserving his own unit so he's taken off a lot of damage and thus he can't do much himself now he can't rush in most much armor because he's had to spend a lot more of his manpower on infantry to replace the losses he kept on suffering and we are seeing another 17 pounder gun going up here from the sea but also ensures that Bretton cannot directly support here because again there's a 17 pounder gun in the bloody way Oh, never mind that he just crashes through the trees. But if it hadn't been a sip Pershing, it would not have been able to, and again, the road would have been blocked. So my point still stands. But there you go. Pershing moves up, main gun destroyed on one of the Panthers. And there we go. Panther down, Panther down, three left, although already heavy losses on the Panther side, already three Panther. And Vinford now going too late. Too late for what? And now it looks like Vinfred is about to play the victim. Here. Despite the fact that he was the one that wanted to make a direct assault on a British fortified position. And they're down to pretty much one panther. Again claiming his other player was playing selfish when again he was pretty much insisted on attacking did not wish to listen to se other proposals I fail to see how that is not selfish from himself and you usually see this as a hallmark of some players others you know apparently never good enough for them and usually they're crap themselves in reality yet yeah, they demand to constantly be followed around and have everything done what they ask for looks like there's another weapon left behind here another Bren gun which could be picked up by the German troops 40 kills in those Fortum Jaegers going for points down there we are seeing a quick advance by the British we're seeing another 17 pounder gun set up to clear up this area all that comes under fire from the Tommies the remaining Panther the remaining Panther come back to front moving up Oh, there's an anti-tank nearby from Breton. And we do see the Pershing as well. The Panther needs to get out of there. Luxuk. And the Panther pulls away under fire from the British. But they need to get the victory points fast. Back fast. Otherwise, I mean, they will run into some serious trouble. And at least one point has been secured by Sotamis. It looks like Sotamis continues to carry this match on his shoulders. Uh, Vinfred seems a bit more content with plodding along, doing whatever he wants, and then blaming his teammate. So, and of course, we have three priests just constantly bombarding. It's actually time to have a look at the Germans. Vinfred. 
who has sector artillery prepared. He has a lot prepared. There are no Hummels yet. He does not have a lot, although it looks like some armor is being recovered. He could, of course, also recover some of the scout cars with this newly arrived Bergi Tiger, although technically there was none. And what is suspected of this vehicle, which is and what was actually based, this Bergi Tiger's base storm was actually a demolition vehicle. That is a Tiger which has been damaged and then been wrecked to basically carry large explosives to blow up obstacles and other things. The closest there was, was to a Bergi Tiger was the Bergi Elephant, which was again based on a Tiger, but a different Tiger. That's the Porsche Tiger, which never really saw much production because the Henschel one was chosen. But Ferdinand Porsche had already built a bunch of them. And so, some sort of action, most were converted into the Elephant, with some again converted to Bergi Elephant. Minor fighting going on here. 40 megas in the fire from the riflemen. And a grenade straight on the 40 megas doing terrible damage, forcing them away. And again, so Tommy's is the one basically taking most of the map. Vinford is the one largely just, well, pulling together some resources, of course, but also largely doing nothing. He's not taking one taking territory. He's not the one. Currently delivering damage to his opponent. Well, there seems to be an effort right now, but running straight into a purging and two flamethrowers. Panther arriving, dual offensive entrance opening up, and then Unis quickly send them away. Might try to take on the veterans who want purging. British advancing in the south once more, and those. Three priests continue to bombard, although they're not really doing a lot of damage. Which of course also begs the question if it's actually worth for the CP to actually get so many priests. But again, some players do seem to have a fondness bordering on the irrational for artillery. And then of course they proceed to neglect every other combat force and definitely looks like we're seeing a British player who's pretty much just digging in and turning out to support, which of course also means his teammate, I mean, will be taking a lot more of the losses, meaning of course again, Breton will soon become combat ineffective, meaning again the Germans can just basically take the time and crush the British, well the Allies, and all in all. And again, that's why you should never just have one player that just goes, oh well, I'll just, you know, support and hold some ground, never. Always if both players have combat forces and always be have some capability to attack. I mean, I'm not saying you should be able to conduct a Blitzkrieg with even a lo limited attack with some ground and pressure applied to the opponent matters. What, so what we do have here is a very static force that can't move very far. And looking at Sotamis. We are seeing butterfly bombs going down right there from him. His force makers and Panzer is holding up as the Americans make an advance. Under fire from a the sector until he goes down, scattering the American assault, breaking up the attackers. Quite nice right there. The Luftwaffe barely holding on there with a the BA of their own. Very close to getting hit by artillery. They need to retreat. Ruxuk, Sotamis, Ruxuk. Panther coming under fire from Pershing, moving up against it. Forty Megas could also become a target. Panther is moving up from Satami's Panther check. Oh, but it misses, it misses. And Tatanga moving up. Panther rhyming from Winfred. Engagement breaking out right about here. Panther check was close to hitting the Panther. Panther was close to hitting the Panther. And we are seeing another sort going in from Breton. Straight against the Forge Megas against 51 kill check. That's really barely misses the rifle and the rifle in the arm. They end up dying and the hands of the Forge Megas. Brutal stuff. 57 kills for the Forge Megas. Definite killers. Panther moves in and it finally gets the Persian kill. But the anti tank gun gets in the rear, sending it out of control and into this bit of wall right there. Tragic fighting. Tragic. And again, pretty much only. Priests and some 17 pounder guns for Dashipi. Not really helping him much. And again, meaning he can't do much to help his opponent much longer. Another Panther battle group arriving for Zotamis. Panther though needs to get out of there. 
machine gun operation stopping the Panzer Grenadiers in their tracks. And we are 100 munitions away from a Henschel Panzernacker, which could have been used against the priest to knock them out. Panther could also be lost to the intense 17 pounder gun fire coming in from there, and looks like it will happen. Panther down, the 17 pounder guns score another kill for King George in good old Winston. The enemy has fallen to 200 points. He must be further in. Redson pushes into the center, might go for the victory point right there, though that is definitely also helped by the Germans. But again, no, Breton is the only one pushing, and that also means that Breton is the only one really taking casualties. Which also means he's the, uh, going to be the one which is going to be drained down a lot faster. In particular, considering his unit preservation, again, not really solid play going on there from the Allies. They're definitely making it easier for the Germans to defeat them. Panzer going to lose in Luftwaffe troops. Leading the charge into the center. And a Hummel self propelled artillery piece has been sent into support from Corps Command. It's 150 millimeter shells flying through the air. Seems a bit wasteful to just fight against a small squad of infantrymen. But that might be me. That might just be me. Victory points are pretty close to the two sides. Although now the Americans are on the loot or the Allies are on the losing side of that bit again. And direct strike three in against the Luftwaffe troops that need to get out of there. Get out of there before it's too late. Building collapses under the weight of artillery. And there we go, the Luftwaffe squad was not retreating in time, and so Tommy lost another squad of troops from the Luftwaffe. Reifman moving towards the northern victory point. Troops holding up in the center. Berger Tiger recovering as a panther. And another Sherman out from Breton, but no Pershing. Curious. And pretty much more of a desperate hold down south, no greater forces anymore. A small dedicated assault by a few Panzer Gunners with the Panzer X could clear that out quite quickly. Fighting in the North Panthers, leading the way, Force Megas and another Panther following up. And a bunch of Panzer Gunners as well. Steve bombs the goal from the rear of the Panther. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There we go, the Ravner just getting slaughtered, not looking good. Again, another direct artillery strike against the positions of Tommy's as he advances straight. Attempt at breaking up the German assault. Will it succeed? Will it succeed? Apparently not. What a shame. We are losing a fuel point. And again, the priests, while they're overall not achieving an awful lot. And they're certainly draining out a lot of resources, I imagine, from Dasipi. Attempt to breaking up any defenses right there, but there's battling anything, and that's just a Berger Tiger. And that's currently being missed. Looks like a creeping barrage going down. And looks like it. Oh dear, it misses anything worth. Anything. I mean, it misses the Hummel and it misses the Bergetiger. That's just rubbish. At the same time, looks like Panzer have managed to sneak about. Finding at the 17 pounder gun emplacement, although not really much able to do much damage with the assault rifles and sending grenades go off. Artillery going on directly on the trench. The trench is large, protecting them quite nicely. Sherman moving in against the Panthers, although again equipped with Panthers. Oh, looks like something went off there, killing one. 50 caliber and being equipped. Panthers could easily move up and support their troops. 17 pounder gun still stands proudly. And there we get Rifle charging straight at the veterans. 340 megas with 60 kills. 
those are definitely some true heroes of the Third Reich of Germany. And there we go, one squad got wiped out, leading behind the Panzer Strike for the Americans to pick up and turn against the crap masters. Panthers rolling up, getting off some good hits on the Sherman. Artillery hitting, I'm not entirely sure it's British, uh, German artillery hitting the American riflemen. It's hard to tell actually. So much artillery being locked around. But most of it is missing, which is a definite bit of a shame. And what is this? A flank 88 is now up for the Panzer League players and armies. And also note the placement, it's set up in a support role. It's not the first line of defense, it's basically there to support the front line in case you know it's pushed back. Meaning that, uh, not of course it's going to be able to help that, but it's not going to be the first thing sighted, it's not going to be the first thing targeted. And sometimes that's the best placement of an emplacement, that's not, you know, at the edge of the front line, but you know, slightly behind it so it can still, you know, support the front line, but at the same time, it's not well, going I to be the first target and thus the, the first time knocked out, because such weapons tend to be a bit more easier to take out and a bit more vulnerable, considering they're not heavily encased in armor. And can't move at all. Well, force me arriving from the Tommies, and there we go, Pershing opens up. Killing one poor bastard. Sending away the rest. Panthers could be making a push down here, but seem to be not really in the mood. Not really in the mood whatsoever. And looks like Sotamis is sending in something to deal with us. Priest, he could try and call in the Henschel Panzernaka, but seems not interested in it. And looks like the South is now completely falling to the Germans, to the Krauts, to the Huns. Let's go look at the CP who has, well... He's got a 17 pounder gun left. He's got his three priests and... That's about it. I mean, again, his force is pretty rubbish. And note also because of the three priests, which do take up a lot of population, he can barely train any units. I mean, he's absolutely crippled himself doing this, and he's floating a ton of resources, by the way. I mean, not really solid play at all right there by the British player. Artillery is nice, but it should always, you know, be in support of other things, and currently he has nothing for it to support. His teammate does barely have anything it can support. And basically his teammate has too much downtime every day of because, again, he's the only one doing anything now. It's a very important dynamic in team games, which a lot of players forget. They just think, well, you know, one attacks, one supports, and then they seem to casually forget there's other ways of actually supporting a player. And working with a player, rather than your one does all the work, the other one just sits back, you know, fires materially from time to time. And there we go. Dashibi has given up. Realising his failure, he lets it. And yeah, the game is pretty much ended now, then one player's left. A few more minutes, and there you go. And there we go, just charging in the priests. And there we go, game over. A full loss for the Allied forces as they did attempt to break into this unnamed town. So, what can we learn from it? I mean, again, this, this is largely a bit, again, that lesson in team play, you know, again, you know, for the Germans. Clearly, Winfried needs to also know that his opponent might have, his teammate might have other ideas, that he's not necessarily, you know, Reichsführer SS, and should not be, you know, in charge of all decisions, particularly considering the way he played was not necessarily the strongest either. Also, again, you know, remember anti-tank assets, they were quite vulnerable for a short period of time, and it was certainly in the Allies' slight fault that they did not exploit it further. Another problem is, again, was the British passive play, much very support play, and again, put all the pressure up. Upon his teammates' shoulders, which again also meant he was very much quickly crumbled and thus not able to do much work either or help his teammate when it came to be. Always share the burden, always fight. I'm not saying you should fight with the exact same force, but again, you should have some slight variety and again, you should both be fighting. If that doesn't happen again, one player takes all the pressure, he gets ground down, and then the other player is left for it to fend for himself while the other player builds up his forces again. And that's a problem. Another huge problem again was. You know, basically, unit preservation, a lot of units were wasted in pointless head-on assaults that saw grotesque casualties. 
as they ran past automatic weapons or got run straight into anti-tank belts. Not really good at all. Terrible, in fact, no attempt at flanking at all, which again is quite vital. In particular as the Allies, in particular as the Americans. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you bloody well learned something from it. If you did, why not subscribe, tell your friends. If you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.